Hey, I'm Ty Wynn and thanks for tuning in again. I've got an incredible story to share with you. We are hanging out in Kauai, Hawaii Woo-hoo. with one of the coolest <laughs> chicks I've met, Miss Shannon Kaiser. Shannon Kaiser is a best-selling author, travel writer and life coach. She's just going to share her journey and I know it's going to inspire thousands of people out there. So Shannon, thanks so much for taking time out and hanging out. Thanks. Cheers, mate. <laughs> I'm so excited you're here. This is amazing. Fantastic. Thanks for coming. No, this is this is incredible. You run a website called Play With The World. Yeah, right. And Shannon was kind enough to invite me along to hang out. We went on this ATV four-wheel trip <laughs> and then we went on a what was it like a catamaran yeah sailboat Sailboat. amazing oh incredible and so she (laughs) is in every way practicing what she preaches and and so shannon let's get started with with how you've ended up here your life is in every way the utopian life tell us about your journey from from where you used to be to where you are now yeah that's true thanks for that you know it's been fun playing with you and playing with the world but it hasn't always been this way sure you know i was telling you a little bit uh it's been interesting it's been a journey because the truth is i haven't always been this happy and um i actually pursued the corporate route i call it a quarter life crisis because i was in my 20s climbing the corporate ladder and i was doing what society thought I should do. Get a good job, you know, get ready to get married and just work really hard to make ends meet. And and it was like, um, there's always something missing inside of me. And inside, I felt like something was off. And what happens, I mean, maybe you can relate, maybe this has happened to you where you get someplace and it's not what you thought. And I realized that I had been chasing a dream outside of myself that wasn't even my dream. And mm-hmm. I had never stopped to ask myself, what do you really want? Okay. I was listening to everyone else. Mm. And in that process, it resulted in some deep, deep pain, some depression. I was cl- diagnosed with clinical depression. Okay. And then I was, um, of course, I turned to drugs and alcohol as kind of a soothing and um, cycled through that. And then I also suffered from eating disorders. So it was kind of this gamut of darkness that followed me around. And I remember mm. I was crying. at work. I was in corporate working in advertising. It got so bad that I was crying. I had to excuse myself from meetings and cry in the bathroom. And I, you know, I thought, I don't think other people cry this much. Is this, is this what life is? I don't know. Hmm. But I thought there's got to be a better way. Yeah. It was intense. Well, I love what you just said about having to excuse yourself and just being able to release that pain. And I feel like and you've experienced this with all the people you're coaching that this is something that actually comes up so much more often than we think. So for you, how did you break out of that? Yeah, it, well, it was this, a, a series of a lot of steps, but before I got to living the life that I live today and truly playing with the world and following my heart, I actually had a moment while I was in corporate and I call this kind of the epiphany where all of a sudden, I call it epiphany, right? Uh, on purpose. That's good. <laughs> that was on purpose. Uh, yeah, I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> That's on purpose. I mess up words as a writer, by the way. Um, so it was a moment where all of a sudden I was crying. I was in a place of such darkness and my body was hurting from the pain and the tears of exhaustion. I said, it is so exhausting to be someone you can't. And at that moment, it's like the air thinned out around me. And I heard my internal voice finally say, it had a platform, it said, Shannon, follow your heart. Mm. And that was four years ago, five years ago, really, to the date. And since then, I've been following my heart and I have um, really taken steps. And so that's really what the journey has been about opening doors and trusting, does this feel right? And going in that direction versus trying to, does it appear in my head? Instead of listening to my head, I really, the transformational moment for me was dropping to my heart. And that's what I teach and that's what I do. And that's why I'm so passionate about playing with the world because yeah. that's important. Yeah. Life is short. Absolutely. Apart from the general notion of fear that holds people back, could you get specific and name a few things that really held you back and holds a lot of people back that you meet? Yeah. You know, one of the most common fears that I find, and for me too, was fear of the unknown. Okay. And and all of us have limiting beliefs and a lot of insecurities that we come and bring to the table. It's just part of living life and being human. But I think for me specifically, I stayed in corporate after I knew it wasn't right. Okay. Before I had that moment, I knew there was a piece in me where I was struggling because it felt like I was resisting. I was going against the grain, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. And 
in that moment, I recognized that my biggest fear is what's going to happen. Well, yeah. I don't know and I don't have certainty, but in corporate, even though I totally am suffocating in my own depression, it's better because I know I'm going to get a paycheck every two weeks, right? Okay, sure. So what I did actually, which is very uh, a really good tool, I sat down and wrote a list of what's the worst thing that can happen because hmm. fear is in our head, right? It feels real, but fear can actually create a bigger story than what it really is. Mm. And so I was thinking, oh my God, I'm going to die. Like, this is going to be the worst thing ever. My parents are going to, you know, shun me. None of that happened. Yeah. In fact, the biggest fear was, well, maybe I go bankrupt. Maybe I have to move back to my parents. And then once I looked at it on paper, I was like, you know what? Honestly, it's life. I'm just going to take that step because that's probably not going to happen. Yeah, sure. And once I took that step, all of a sudden, peace I felt inner peace because you're standing up, you're putting yourself into your life and you're taking mm. a step forward. And honestly, the fear went away Wow! because it's like in the head, right? That's a great practice to overcome. And I love what you said, you know, fear of the unknown is a huge thing. But in writing that out, you've really dispelled and gotten rid of so much fear yeah. in, in that practice of thinking through, consciously thinking through. Absolutely. Shannon, what's been your highlight of your journey since stepping out? You know, I think living from my heart and being able to do what I love every single day, Yeah, I am inspired by life and I'm inspired by the people I meet and the places I go and the people I work with. And so the greatest part is actually feeling connected to love at all the time, all, mm -hmm. all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. That's and awesome. um, choosing, choosing to say yes to my life and choosing to say yes to my dreams. Wow. That's yeah. incredible. Shannon, who's someone that has really inspired you on your journey? Ooh, there's quite a bit. Um, you know, I think from a writer's perspective, I I have a lot of different mentors and I, I truly believe a mentor is one of the, the most pivotal moments for anyone in their life where they're looking for a, a new coach in entering their own business or becoming a writer. And so I've had a lot of really good writers. To say the most influential, I'm going to go actually back to my mom. She's not a writer, but she has to have the support of a family and my dad, that support system in the home, when I said, I'm leaving corporate, I'm going out. And, you know, from a parent's perspective, they could have been like, oh, my gosh, we failed as parents. What is yeah. my child doing? But they knew that I was going to land on my feet and they trusted. And giving me that, tr like giving me that support allowed me to become who I really am. Love it. So family, man, you guys rock, mom and dad. They probably won't watch this. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll have to send it to <laughs> Shannon, could you name one book that has really helped you along in your journey? Yeah, you know, I'm really, really influenced by Elizabeth Gilbert. Okay. And when I read Eat, Pray, Love, I read it when I was in corporate and suffocating from my depression. And then I read it again when I actually took a trip to Paris and, and discovered that I'm a writer. Mm. So I left um, corporate and decided yeah. to take myself on a honeymoon with my computer. And I wrote every single day and I was like, oh my God, I'm a writer. This is what I have to do with my life. And I happened to be reading A Pray Love at the time. And there's something about her writing that really touches my heart because she speaks from her soul and yeah. she has the travel influence. She started as a travel writer and oh, that's wow. what I do. Wow. And so I just really relate to people who are going out and just saying yes to life and, and really busting through that fear. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a daily habit that you found really helpful? I do, and it's probably different uh, for a lot of people, but my daily habit is adventure, <laughs> and I must add adventure into my life, whether it's a hike, a bike, a snorkel tour, that's why Hawaii has been amazing. Uh, for me, adventure is my meditation, and it's my connection with myself and my soul, uh -huh. and I think that's what's really important for all of us. We have to find what we value and what we really relate to in life. Uh, not everyone loves jumping out of planes and skydiving, right? And the, but the, the, the thing is, we all have something we love. Maybe it's baking. Maybe it's connecting with your children. Maybe it's just having coffee with a friend, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact is, we have to give ourselves permission, I think, to do it daily. And when we do, all of the things that we carry around in our head and the heaviness really kind of subsides. So in that experience yeah. <laughs> of really trusting myself and putting adventure in my life, it's been transformational for my own growth. That's great. Do you have a, a daily mantra or a saying that really drives you? Yeah, well, I, I love that question. I'm a mantra girl. I yeah. have motivational mantras, which I update on my Facebook all the time, so they change daily. But uh, one that I have really been practicing since I started writing my next book is, you are right where you need to be. Everything is in divine order mm. or everything is in right order because I think there's a lot of pressure yeah. to be somewhere where we're not, either 
that dream needs to be reached now. We need to be with that man. We need to lose that weight. It's always something outside of ourselves, like right yeah. out there. Yeah. But guess what? Like, what if right here, right where we are, is absolutely the most perfect place you can be? Yeah. And it's been great. helpful. That's great. What kind of change are you wanting to bring about through your work? I actually believe in a world where every single person can be living fearlessly from their heart and truly living their full potential. Mm. So that is my mission to help people create a life that they're passionately in love with. And, and that's what I'm working towards creating. Love it. That's related to our next question. So you could repeat the same thing. But what's awesome. your definition of happiness? Yeah, well, actually, my definition of happiness is being true to yourself mm -hmm. and living from your heart, I think, is really important because guess what? Your happiness is not going to be the same as mine. Yeah. I know we have a lot in common, but every single person has their own internal compass. And yeah. so allowing each person to be who they are is part of you being who you are. So expressing yourself fully is about knowing that happiness is different for everyone and that's mm. okay. Happiness is great. That's awesome. Now, I know a lot of people are going to want to connect more with you, Shannon. What are the best ways people can reach you? Yes, I would love it if you hop on over to playwiththeworld.com and you can check out some adventures there. And then actually through there, you can connect to my social media channels. I am a big Facebooker and I post motivational mantras and my adventures on there. Mm -hmm. And you can stay up to date. And that's my author page. But you can connect through playwiththeworld.com. Love, love it. Any final words for everyone watching? We live in a beautiful world. Go play with it. Amazing. <laughs> no, it's been great. I've I've really had a good time being here. And um, I think, you know what? Enjoy the journey because it's, life is short. And I think the reality is we just have to go out and really live from our heart and, and have fun doing it. Love it. Love it. I know you've loved this part of Shannon Kaiser's journey. And we're going to pick her brain even more in parts two, three, and probably four or five, however many sessions we're going to get. But we're going to have a few masterclass sessions with Shannon. So check out those videos. Shannon Kaiser, thank you so much Thanks. for your time. It's been amazing. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Go out and get it. See you later. Bye.